Blazing Babus Studies. Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. I know I'm a little early, but um, I got some other recordings to do, some more podcasting. So I said, let me just jump on here. I'm prepared. I'm ready, and I hope you're ready. Listen, this is a parental discretion Bible study. Be prepared. If you have a child, you don't want this child to be around unless we're going to pray. But you don't want your child to be around because what I'm going to discuss might be a little scary to the child. And I mean, in child um, 13, 12 and under, 13 year olds might have some understanding of this, but I don't want to frighten any of the children. We're going to pray over this Bible study because we're going to tackle something that a lot of skeptics that don't believe in God, that don't believe in spirits, that don't believe in demons, that don't believe in heaven, they don't believe in hell, they don't believe in Jesus. They say that there's none of this exists, they say. Okay, um, I have to respect people's unbelief, right? Um, but where I come from and how I grew up and what I know, what I've seen with these two eyes, well, these four eyes, um, they used to be two when I was young, now they're four. Um, I've seen some things and I know some things for sure. Listen, um, demons do exist just to get that out of the way, but I know a lot of people don't believe that. So if you have children right now, um, I'm going to ask, maybe you can have them in another room or you could get off, be with your kids and watch this later on because we're going to go into some scripture, to some word and some discernment that we have to have because I'm ahead of this thing. October is coming and it's coming quick and it's going to be a lot of demonic activity going on in the earth, the heavenly realms, which is the earthly realm between here and the things that we can't see. The unseen things are going to start to try to manifest in our reality in our time if you don't believe that uh, it's all good you don't have to listen you don't have to watch amen um but we're gonna pray over this on um, bible study tonight uh, do demons really exist amen and pastor michael jakes god bless you i saw your interview online 
with the sister. Amen. And I was very, very pleased um, with your interview. And let me just move this around for a little bit. Make this a little bigger. And um, you have a, a part in your book. I haven't got it. I can't lie. I got to get it. I'm going to get it tonight on Amazon. Spiritual Warfare. Uh, I need you to be a guest of something that's coming up. Amen. And we'll discuss that afterwards. So, Pastor Michael Jace, God bless you. Sister Carmen Mata, God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you as well. You and your husband and your family. Oh, yes. Prayer is definitely needed. Yes, we're going to pray because there's a lot of things coming. You, you feel depression? Do you feel anxiety? Do you feel like there's something else going on in your life besides the regular daily life? If you feel extra stressed, you feel depressed, you feel sometimes oppressed, you feel like you're hearing things in your mind, um, you might be even seeing things, shadows, dark things, and all that stuff. Listen, you're not going crazy. Right now, the other side, you know, I'm a Star Wars fan, so you have the Jedi Knights where, you know, may the force be with you, that type of thing, and then you had the Sith, Lord Sith and all that. They were in the dark side. Well, what were they trying to do? They were trying to get, first of all, they, had to, they hated the Jedi. They hated the light, so they wanted the people from the light to come on over into the dark side. Guess what's happening around these months and going forward? Um, the darkness is trying to get the light to deceive us and to believe that the darkness is better than the light. So that's why you might be feeling depression. You might be feeling something extra going on in, uh, in your circumstances, in the atmosphere. You might not realize it right away. And listen, not everything is supernatural, spiritual. I'm not saying that. Some things are psychological and you need to go, sometimes you need to go to a pastor or sometimes you need to go to a psychologist to get some therapy. Amen. Imagine you have a Christian psychologist or a Christian therapist, amen, like my pastors, amen, that'd be a great thing because now you're getting your spirit fed and you're getting your soul and your mind right, right, and the things of God. So we're going to cover this Bible study in prayer, amen, I got a lot of ground to cover, but I believe it's going to help you, it's going to start um, getting us ready for battle, preparing for spiritual warfare because it's here. But I just want to let my friends, my brothers and sisters know, my family know that it's right around the corner where it's going to be a different level of spiritual demonic activity. So, you know, and I'm not crazy. I'm not like a demon hunter or anything like that. But yet I dealt with demons unwantingly. And I'll share that little story in a little bit. Uh, and I've done that and I've cast out demons in the name of Jesus um, immaturely, and I'm explain what I mean about that as well. Amen. And then first and foremost, we're going to get into the word. We're going to be in Mark chapter nine. We're going to see what actually happened with the Lord Jesus Christ and some of his disciples. They were there. They saw with their own eyes. Jesus was experienced the mountaintop experience, the transfiguration. Amen. And we're not going to Concentrate on the transfiguration, how Jesus was showing all his glory, and then Moses, uh, Elijah, and the prophets showed up. Elijah, Moses, and there was another one. Uh, Moses, Elijah, and oh my God, Moses, Elijah, and I can't remember the other one. So we're going to probably have to read the scripture because I don't want to lead nobody straight. Moses, Elijah, uh, Moses, Elijah. Oh yeah, it was just Moses and Elijah. That's why. Thank you, Lord. I was trying to add somebody else there. And Jesus, Elijah appeared to them with Moses and they were talking with Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. There was three there. Amen. See, Holy Spirit, God doesn't let me get out of out of whack, even though I'm excited right now. Amen. Amen. So you already know that this is going to be one of those type of Bible studies that's going to bring deliverance to us in the name of Jesus. So um, who wants to pray with me? Amen. Let's pray over this Bible study. Do demons... Are demons real? Do demons really exist? And for all the skeptics, hold on, you know, hang out with us. Uh, we're not wacko like you think we are. Uh, we didn't lose our mind. We didn't lose our thoughts. We didn't lose our mentality. We didn't lose our intelligence um, when we received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What we gained was the mind of Christ. Amen. And we, yeah, we think and act differently. You might call it strange. We call it, we walk in the supernatural. We walk with a hedge of protection. So if you have children, I think 12 and under, you might want to make arrangements. If you can't watch right now, watch this later. 
uh, with adults, with your husband, with your wife, with your family that are adults or more mature in the faith. If you have a child that's mature in the faith, amen, and they ain't afraid because um, some kids I see, they ain't afraid of none of this. Um, but they know Jesus is their protector, their Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I cover this Bible study, The Blaze, right now tonight with every single viewer. In the name of Jesus, I pray for arcing angels, warring angels, ministering angels to every household that's going to receive this word from you, Lord Jesus. I pray protection over our minds, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I pray over our eye gates and our ear gates in the name of Jesus that you would separate us from anything demonic that was going to try to deceive us, try to attack our ears and our eyes, what we see and what we hear, Lord God, and guard our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ who strengthens, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, the blood, and I plead the blood of Jesus over our bodies, our minds, our everything, Lord God, as we walk towards you in victory, and as we get this battle plan going, and we start gearing up um, for war. We start armoring ourselves up with the armor of God tonight in the name of Jesus. So I thank you for every single weapon that has been destroyed right now, because you have the victory over Satan and his demons in the name of Jesus. And I thank you Lord God, for what you're going to do, the deliverance, the testimonies, the salvations, everything that you're going to do tonight, Lord God. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you worship, and I give you my praise right now. And the saints said, Amen and Amen. Listen, I'm a man of God. Any questions? There's women of God out there that are watching, there's men of God, there's young men in the faith, there's skeptics, there's unbelievers, there's cynics, there's agnostics, there's um, all kind of people right now following this ministry. From one reason or another, amen. And for that, I'm going to start giving some giveaways out uh, just, to, just to get you ready for October. We're going to fight the good fight, amen. I'm not going to return evil with evil, but I'm going to fight evil with good, amen. Because the Lord God is good and he overcomes evil, not with evil. He overcomes evil with good. And I must follow that example. So let's go into Mark chapter 9, amen. But before that, let me make a quick announcement. And maybe you can help me out with this. If you know people that you think are equipped for this, amen, get them in contact with me, amen. I'm setting this up, but I don't have a lot of time. I want to have everything really ramped up in the next two to three weeks so that way when I launch this thing, it'll be more powerful than what I envision now in my own head, amen. But I knew this had to be done just because of some things I've seen that I'll keep to myself for now and going on in our area in my sphere of influence and also in the country and i see it and i know other believers in christ are seeing it but we don't want to go out and do all these youtube videos and these lives talking about it because a lot of people will think we're crazy and for those who are empowered and anointed to speak the things that god is telling you that's why your youtube pages that you see with um prophecies and dreams and all that that's why they're blowing up because a lot of what they're saying matches up with the word and if it matches up with the word then it's really it's legit. It's legitimate. Amen. But let me make this quick announcement and then I'll get into it. Uh, October 31st, I plan on doing a live podcast similar to this, but it's going to be with live special guests, special ministers. Amen. I'm going to call it Covered by the Blood. We're going to come against this whole Halloween situation because God is not for Halloween. God is not for evil, the occult, darkness, witches, demons. Yet in God's word, he talks about the witches. He talks about these people and the demonics and the uh, you know soothsayers and the psychics and demon possessed people and all that. He doesn't endorse it, but he says it's true and it's real. Um, so we have to be careful. So covered by the blood. If you know any ministers that are empowered with the word of God when it comes to divine deliverance, healing, when it comes to um, rebuking demons, um, ancestral, um, breaking people free from ancestral curses generational curses like that please connect them with connect me with them amen i already have a couple of people in mind um but nothing has been um set in stone yet amen so that's where we're headed um october 31st and i hope you could join me this that that'll be something really really powerful um not because i'm going to be involved in it is because i already have some people that god is putting in my mind um to get this whole thing going on and that that's uh that's a lot of glory right there. That's a lot of peace and glory. Amen. And I have this mic in the way. Let me get this out of here. Um, for some reason or another, I keep on having this mic in my way. Just put it on the floor. It's too distracting. I was going to record my podcast at the same time. But I said, nah, let me not do that. So 
spiritual warfare. We, we're in it. We're going to go for it. We have the victory. Don't be afraid. Amen. If you didn't, if you didn't get my book yet, on the other hand, it's called The Enemy Strategy. Victory is yours. You can catch that on Amazon. It's less than $6. Amen. But it's a good investment uh, for you get to get the wheels turning in your mind. Amen. Of how good God is and how we have the victory and all of that. And then like, God bless you, brother. Amen. Beloved brother, many blessings to you as well. So Mark chapter 9, amen, did I make the announcement? Yeah, I made all the announcements and all that. And I'm going to put a ticker on the bottom of the screen. So for those people who need prayer in this area, amen, don't be afraid to ask for prayer. Amen. Um, you could uh, email me at prayer at soulwinnerswithaz.org for any prayer requests. If any questions, comments, concerns, any prayer requests like that, please don't be afraid to email me. I'll keep it confidential uh, just between us and amen. And don't think you're crazy if you're hearing these voices in your head, you're seeing things, you're feeling oppressed, depressed, um, you, you, you know, something is going on. You're just discerning what's going on in the atmosphere. Amen. You're not alone. You're not crazy. Um, you're not psychotic. Amen. Um, that could be a situation that you know, you might have to get clinical or professional therapy or stuff like that. But um, from what I've seen in my experience, I know you're not going crazy. Mark chapter 9. Let's take it from verse 9. They already had this transfiguration, amen, with Jesus. They saw Moses and one uh, like Elijah that looked like Elijah. Uh, so these two um, disciples, Peter, and I believe it was Peter, James, and John, they were eyewitnesses to what happened on that transfiguration situation. Let's go to verse 9 of chapter 9 of the book of Mark. Now, as they came down from the mountain, he commanded them that they should tell no one of the things they had seen till the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So Jesus said, okay, you saw the transfiguration. You saw me speaking to Moses, which at that point was long gone. Elijah at that point was long gone, but yet... Moses and Elijah were speaking with Jesus. Amen. Um, what they said, we don't know because Jesus didn't tell us. As a matter of fact, he didn't want nobody else to know at that time until he rose again from the dead. So Jesus was saying, I am going to rise from the dead bodily, not spiritually, bodily. That's very important because a lot of people are trying to be funny with us and say, ah, oh, Jesus rose spiritually. No, he rose bodily because if he would have said he was going to rise spiritually, then you can't disprove of his resurrection. You can't you can't prove his resurrection. Right. Because then you'd be like, oh, spiritually. Oh, that could mean anything. How did he come back? Did he resurrect in an animal? Did he come back in some kind of other alien or some kind of spirit? No, he rose from the dead bodily. OK, verse 10. So they kept this word to themselves, the disciples. Sometimes, God, that's why I said earlier, use discernment. Sometimes God will speak to us and tell us something, but he doesn't want us to release it right away. Listen, I, I've been brewing with this for a, a minute now, and now is the time. He said, okay, release this. Amen. You felt it. You've been feeling it for a while. You know, you're not going crazy. I heard, I heard the Lord, Holy Spirit, God telling me that you're not going crazy. And no, you're not, you don't have to go be a demon hunter like people thought I was when I first got saved just because demons would manifest and I would rebuke them in the name of Jesus. But I'm going to share two stories, one that I had to and the second one that I think I used more of my emotion and to get it done and it caused somebody else some um, and it caused somebody else some added stress and pain and they weren't truly delivered. I'll talk about that in a minute. So verse number 10, so they kept this word to themselves Questioning what was the rising from the dead? What did that mean? Verse 11, and they asked him saying, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Good question. And then Jesus answered and told them, indeed, Elijah is coming first and restores all things. And how is it written concerning the son of man that he must suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I say to you that Elijah has also come and they did to him whatever they wished as it is written of him verse 14 and when he came to the disciples he saw a great multitude uh, around them and scribes disputing with them verse 15 immediately when they saw him all the people were greatly amazed and running to him greeting him amen 
to greet him because Jesus was known already to um, rebuke demons. He was known to do miraculous things, signs and wonders. Amen. People knew so that when they saw the Lord Jesus, amen, they would run to him. He would have crowds. They would run to him. Amen. He wasn't running out there saying, hey, I'm here. You know, Jesus didn't come to be served. He came to serve. Amen. And to lay his life down as a ransom for us. That's the gospel. Verse 16. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Like, what was the argument all about? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. Stop right there. Mutism could be a spirit not allowing people to speak. I'm just saying, it says right here that this son that was mute um, had a spirit. I'm just repeating. I'm just the, the guy that's repeating what the word says. Amen. So I know some people. Amen. That they don't speak to everybody. They are silenced sometimes. And could that be a spirit? Well, let's go. Let's see what this happened. What in this situation, how it was. Verse 18. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. It throws a person down. So that means this spirit, that's not a godly spirit, has the power or authority to throw things down. People. Throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth. And becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they could cast it out, but they could not. Why do you think the disciples could not cast out a spirit when Jesus gave them authority to lay hands on the sick, cast out spirits and all this other stuff? Why do you think that was? You know, this, uh, there are a lot of stories in the scriptures with prophets, uh, disciples that were going around doing things. That they knew they could do, but they were doing it in a way that God did not tell them to do. Moses struck the rock. He was supposed to speak to the rock. You know, some um, people that weren't exactly uh, Jesus' disciples were going around rebuking demons in the name of Jesus. And there was deliverance. But uh, one situation happened when they said, wait, uh, Paul I know, the disciples I know, uh, but who are you? And the demon spoke right to those people, to those sons of Sceva. And boy, did those sons of Sceva get a butt whipping by those demons because they they came in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And when you say the name of Jesus, that's why I say Jesus a lot on purpose. Yeshua HaMashiach. Just in case I need to speak to some of the demons that don't know English, I'll speak that language. And, and if they know spiritual languages, I'll come with I'll speak in tongues too, so they'll understand that as well. Amen. Now Jesus, Yahweh, Jesus is God, Yahweh is God, the Lord Most High, Adonai, you know, El Shalom, you know, Mashiach Magid, all of that. Amen. Just in case. Um, they don't know who I'm talking about. Now they know who I'm talking about. So they asked the disciples of Jesus, right, to get the spirit out of their of this son. Like, get it out. Now they're asking, listen, they said they couldn't do it. Why? Okay. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples. They, they were like letting Jesus know, I spoke to your people, man. I spoke to your church. I spoke to your evangelists. I spoke to your people. And they're telling us that they can't do nothing about it. Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless generation, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring them to me. Jesus is not, not saying, oh, man, so if my disciples can't do it, man. We're done. Um, this demon wins. No. Jesus said, okay, I don't know. I'm going to have to speak to my disciples on the side. But for now, your son's going to get delivered. I'm speaking right now by the authority of the power of God 
that you're going to be delivered tonight, today. Amen. Jesus said, okay, you went to certain people that said they were disciples of the Lord Jesus. They said they were Christian. They said they were filled with Holy Spirit God, yet the demons still remain. Listen, tonight, Jesus said, step to the side, Sam. Step to the side, you evangelists, you prophet, teachers, pastors, um, prophets, all you step apostles, step to the side because now I'm here and I'm going to take care of the situation. Verse 20, then they brought him to him. They brought this son to Jesus. Amen. Sometimes, I'm just saying, sometimes we got to bypass the whole, um, how you call it, the church order sometimes. And we have to be in desperation to get to Jesus. Get my son, get your daughter, get every, let's get them to Jesus. Amen. Other disciples right now are capable. Listen, if you're empowered by Holy Spirit God, you're capable of delivering someone from a demon in the name of Jesus. Absolutely. Do not be afraid to do that. Amen. When it's necessary. And there's going to be a time coming very soon. I feel the Holy Spirit telling me this very soon um, for a lot of viewers that you're going to have to rise up and be that Jesus in that situation and lay hands and rebuke some things out. And you might be able to Lay hands on yourself and rebuke some things out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because sometimes Jesus would say, okay, we got to take care of this right now. There's like no time to waste. Amen. And why are, are we uh, in this depression, oppression, suppression? Uh, I don't believe a Christian could be possessed, but we can be uh, oppressed. Like I said before, we could be taunted. Amen. Uh, we could be uh, deceived. We could be attacked for sure um, by demonic influences. But in this case, they brought him to Jesus. They brought this son to Jesus. And when Jesus saw him, immediately, when Jesus just saw him, immediately, immediately, the spirit convulsed him. And that spirit was probably like, oh, I'm, I'm about to be out of here. So let me make a show. Let me do a show. <laughs> I'm about to be out. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Stop right there. I witnessed this with my own eyes. We were at, and some of you know the story already, but amen, it's worth repeating. I was at, um, I think it was Uptown Manhattan. I just don't remember where. It, I know it was in New York, either the Bronx or Uptown Manhattan. And we was in this legalistic Pentecostal church, and they wanted to bring me and some people to do rap ministry. Don't understand why they invited us to do a rap ministry in a legalistic church. If you know anything about legalists, churches they say that those are demonic drums and we're rapping demonic words but anyway whatever the purpose was amen we went we ministered we got kicked off we saw the pastor going like this and telling us okay that's enough for them get them off and let's let the preacher preach so it was a youth service um they wanted to get like a youth revival going on that's why they called upon um, the ministry that we were um involved in and the, pre the preacher comes up and he's talking about that we have authority over demons and that we have the power uh, to rebuke demons in the name of Jesus. We have all authority over demons. We can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The message was great. As a matter of fact, I was going up to the pastor and the pastor, I, at that time I used to live in Allentown at that time. This was back, um, I, don't, I don't even know what year is, 2010 I want to say. Maybe even before that. Um, but anyway, we were out there and this we were from Allentown. And this pastor all the way up to my hand, we didn't know him. He was from Allentown too, so it was kind of cool. And I was telling us, man, you look like my dad. My dad died when I was 15 years old, but this man looked just like him. I was like, wow, you look like my pops. So I was taking that as um, the Lord showing me how my dad would operate, how he would preach in a park, like my mom used to say. My mom said when I was a kid, my dad, I don't remember, but my mom said that my dad used to preach and evangelize in the parks in, in Brooklyn. And she says sometimes I was there, but I was probably too young to remember. But um, I was taking that as God giving me a chance to see how my, my dad would operate because this man looked just like him. But anyway, so he's preaching powerful word. People are hallelujah. Everything's going on, right? Boom. Everything's done. Um, we get the little, you know, stares from the, the pastor, like basically telling us with his eyes, don't ever come back. We don't like what you just did. But even though the youth received it and the youth pastor, the youth leader that invited us, he apologized. But he was saying, well, I'm trying to break my church out of this legalistic view of gospel rap and all that. But that's another story. So we're leaving, you know, 
um, packed up our stuff. We're leaving, saying goodbye a lot of people. There was activity there, I must admit, with the girls' leadership, the the woman leadership that wasn't too kosher, amen, and it was getting a little touchy-feely, and I was getting real uncomfortable, so I was telling the other guys, yo, we got to go. Um, this is getting a little bit on the flesh side, so we got to go. Okay, so here comes the pastor and his church, and you know, we usually as Christians, we want to eat after ministry it was at night too, and we were in the hood of Uptown Manhattan, I think it was Dykeman, or if it was the Bronx, I can't remember, I always get the two mixed up, but I know we were Uptown or Bronx, New York. So we wanted to go find a place to eat, and we know about a new spot, and we were going to go. But before we left, guess what happened? So remember, I was telling you the pastor, that the guest pastor that was preaching, he was talking about, he was an evangelist. He was talking about, we have authority over demons. So what happens? As soon as he comes out, the building, we're all in front of um, the church. A demon, a woman demon-possessed, one eye green and one eye yellow, goes right up to him and says, who is your God? To the preacher. So I'm saying, well, it's on and popping now. This brother's going to show us the authority that God gave him. You know, this pastor did, this preacher did, this evangelist did, him and his people. They ran across the street. True story. They ran across the street and left me, the young guy, the younger guy, uh, the ones that, you know, that we were um, uh, um, rapping over demonic drums, the ones that, you know, they were looking at us like, oh, you guys didn't really minister any power here. Uh, we were left there in front of this demon. Okay, now it's on. Because uh, I'm not a professional demon hunter, demon rebuke, or anything like that. So what happens? The demon comes up to me and asks me, who is your God? I said, well, I know exactly who my God is, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the, and then the demon possessed woman tried to spit on one of the brothers that were with me in the ministry. And she couldn't. So you, I, said, I said, you know what? This We're going to settle this. I'm hungry. Uh, I got to get out of here. But we're going to settle this once and for all. And I, I stood up and I made an imaginary line between us, the people that were with me, and that demon-possessed woman. I said, in the name of Jesus, this boundary line you cannot pass. Well, this demon was kind of smart. It was actually looking because I set fire on that floor. Not literally, but in the spirit realm. So the demon could not pass that holy fire. And it was literally looking down as I was going like this with my hand. And it could not pass. So I said, okay, we're done with that. Demon was smart. It went to, I guess I didn't do a circle or a boundary around us. It went to a far side of the corner of it and it passed through. And I said, oh man. Uh, so it must have seen what I was thinking in the name of Jesus, the flame of, of you know separation. So it tried to uh, touch and try to spit on another one of my brothers and the Lord. So I said, okay, that's it. Laid hands on the head in the name of Jesus, cast that demon out. And the preacher and the evangelist and the people, the legalistic leaders were all looking at us like uh, they were afraid. The women were crying and all this other stuff. Um, but that demon was released. So I know about and foaming of the mouth. I've seen it. We've seen it. I have our witnesses. And, but the demon left. That woman was woke up with a different person and the power of the name of Jesus. So I know this is real. I've experienced it. Amen. And a lot of you experienced it too. But it's not every day that we want to talk about this because it kind of like um, brings up some eerie things. I know it makes my hair stand. Verse 21. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? Jesus was asking, how long has this been happening to this your son? In other words, this is ridiculous. How long has this been happening? My disciples, I'll deal with them later. And he said, from childhood. So since this child was a kid, he was suffering um, being oppressed and possessed by a demon attacking. Verse 22. And often he has thrown him both. Don't thrown him both because this person is saying, listen, this spiritual warfare going on. There's more than one person when it happens. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. Try to throw him in the fire and try to drown him in the water. A demon. Jesus is there. Seeing and responding and asking questions, and this is a true thing that happened, true event. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. If Jesus could do anything, watch this, verse 23. Jesus said to him, if I can, if you can, Jesus said, 
believe because Jesus said, I can't. It's not about what I can do. It's about if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to him who believes. Are demons real? Yes. Are demons are they have victory over some people? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. But over a Christian and a person that's on duty, uh, you're on call, you're, you're on your watch. Amen? No. It ain't happening. Amen? If not if we have to drag a, a person, a young boy, a young girl, a young woman, husband, wife, to the Lord himself. Not on our watch. All things are possible to him who believes. Jesus said that. You could also read that in John chapter 11, verse 40. Verse 24, another immediately, immediately, we don't have to listen. I have saw things on YouTube that these evangelists are saying I had to wrestle with this demon for two, three hours. I don't know what they were wrestling with a demon for. Jesus, Jesus, uh, that'll wake the demon up. If not, the demon will flee. Uh, I don't know what the conversation was all about. And they were filming. I saw a couple of them they were filming. The demon's going back and forth. How you get to ask questions to a lying spirit as if you're going to get a right, uh, 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 honest answer from a demon? Listen, no conversation needs to be happening. Something needs to happen immediately if Jesus is involved. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. It's all good. Listen, the devil tries to bombard us with these things. Oh, you don't believe? You have doubt? That's incredibly not Christian. You can't be a Christian if you have doubts. And the demons that are in your home, in your house, in your life, amen, they have to stay because now you have doubts, so you have no more authority. That's a lie from the pit of hell, and it smells like smoke. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. That's a prayer right there that you could pray honestly to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have to deal with. I have to deal with that as often as well. Amen. Help me in my unbelief. This is the year. This whole COVID, but that wasn't the the issue with me. My issue this year was to for God to help my unbelief. Yeah, I have doubts in certain areas. It's not doubting in God, not doubting in the Word. It's doubting in how I operate in the Word. And I want to try to get rid of all kind of excuses this year. That was my goal. Still my goal. We still have some time in this year. Lord willing, if he gives me the rest of this year. Verse 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, speak to that thing in the name of Jesus. Jesus said to this spirit, remember, it was a, a spirit that got this young man mute. And we try to drown the, the son and try to throw the son to fire. Jesus said, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you. This is Jesus. It's in red. I command you, come out of him and answer him no more. Start, time out, time out, time out. Come out of him. If Jesus would have just said that, then the, the I guess the demon would have been able to enter again. Amen. This comes to my second short story. I was a youth minister, a youth director for a large church, and we used to bus kids from all over the cities, um, Allentown and Bethlehem, a little bit from Eastern used to come too. But um, there was a situation where we had a young student, young youth, teenager, that was being oppressed uh, and was battling with three specific demons that I knew from I was familiar with because God delivered me from these three so zealous Sam decided one night don't ask me why I was full of emotion and compassion I wanted to see deliverance from this young teen and no I didn't have to go into her house and lay hands on another that it was late at night and I was on like a mission an operation you know dressed all in black and all that type of thing I knew what an entry was for those demons that kept on oppressing and kept on trying to possess her. I knew where they were entering and exiting from. I, I knew it through the spirit realm. And I also knew it through some objects that was in front of her apartment building in the hallway. So I went over there to smash, literally to smash the idols that I knew there was passageway between demonics, demonic influence, demons, 
and where it kept on coming in and out. Because when you get this girl in front of the light of Christ, you would get into an environment where there's um, praise and worship and all that. She would thrive and she would engage and she would be loosened from those things. And they will not be able to speak. They will not be able to talk to her. Uh, none of that. And we used to have a small group, Bible studies and everything. And she even uh, became one of the helpers when we used to do ministries in other churches. Amen. So I saw freedom. Amen. Um, in her life. But I also knew that when she went back to her home, to her apartment, um, they were waiting there because she did not have the relationship with the Lord. The house was clean. So we delivered her from the demons. And, and this is when I was very immature in the faith and I didn't know the consequences um, that Jesus was talking about right here when he rebuked the demons and say, and don't come back. I later on realized, amen. After we released her from those demons and after I smashed those idols literally that were in front in the hallway of our building, smashed them. And I literally in the spirit saw three spirits leave out of that building, uh, out of that building, apartment building. And I knew she was free. But then the problem was she didn't receive Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. She was around environments uh, that helped her grow. Um, you know, she read some word prayed and all that but she did not personally receive the lord jesus christ as her personal lord and savior so basically what was happening is she was being uh, going she was sick and going to a hospital to get well amen and then going back into a sickness if you get my drift you understand what i'm saying so the house was clean but what happened was and this is my bad i was immature and i was acting on emotion i was i had a full of zeal to see her delivered and see all the youth delivered by that matter and we saw some deliverance, amen, by the way, oh, glory to God. And they came back, seven more, even worse than the first three that were gone. They came back with their buddies. And to this day, uh, she's living out there in a life that's not um, pleasing to the Lord, amen. So we have to be careful when we do that even. But when Jesus shows up in a situation, he takes care of it from beginning to end. It's taken care of. So Jesus said this, uh, I lost my place, amen. Jesus said, oh man, where was I? I got distracted with that story, but amen, God is good. So he said to him, you can't, okay, here we go. Deaf and dumb spirit, this is Jesus, what Jesus said to the spirit. I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Boy, I wish I knew that at that time to pray that prayer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, for those things never to return. It happened another time, but I'm running out of time here. I don't want to bore you with my stories. It was another youth that got hit by a bike and he was near death. And me and the youth minister, shout out to Brother Nate Moyer. Amen. We declared a word that was found in Psalms, I believe. Um, where God says um, he's the God of miracles, performs wonders amongst his people. We declared that word over this young man, and yeah, he lived, amen, but we didn't say the other half. We wanted a complete wholeness and healing over that young man. That young man got healed, came out of that bed. Um, listen, his head was this big in the hospital bed, amen, and God rescued him, saved him, um, delivered him from that hospital bed, but this man's mind was still not there. So, that's why being specific, especially when dealing with de demons and all that stuff, Jesus was specific. Get out and don't come back. Listen, that's going to be my prayer if, if need be, if necessary. Amen. Leave and don't come back. How about that? Demons. Are they real? Jesus de dealt with demons and spirits and all that. Jesus is true. He's real. He's amazing. He's alive. He's full of truth right? and power. He's not going to make up a story just to make himself look good because he gave us the authority and power. Amen. We're commissioned to do the same, even greater exploits. The Lord Jesus himself said we would do on this side of eternity. So come out of him, enter him no more. Then this is what happened. Verse 26. Then the spirit, verse 26. Yeah. Uh, oh, you were helping me out. Thank you, Carmen. Amen. You were helping. You were helping me out. Then the spirit cried out convulsed him greatly and came out of him and he became as one dead 
so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. Doesn't he do that? How many times <laughs> Jesus did that to me? He did that to every person I know that was saved. And I was dead, yeah, before Jesus. Listen, I'm going to say this till Jesus takes me back. And I didn't get this on my own. I got this from, I heard this from Robert Zacharias, the late great Robert Zacharias, the apologist. He said that Jesus Christ didn't come to make bad people good. Jesus came to make dead people live. So Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? Like the disciples were even like amazed. Like what's going on here? Why did we have to bail out? How come we couldn't do this? Why did they have to go directly to you, Lord? So they asked him privately. And I would ask Jesus privately too because I, didn't want, I wouldn't want to start a commotion and be like um, asking in front of the people that we just said that we couldn't do it. So they asked Jesus privately. And we have that ability to go to Jesus Christ privately. So he said to them, this kind, that kind of spirit, can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Time out. Did it say that Jesus prayed and fasted? He must have. That was his life. That's what he did. Remember, he used to go away and pray. And he fasted 40 days. The enemy, you know, tried to tempt his humanity, not his deity. Because God could not be tempted. Lest does God tempt. But, yeah, the devil tried to test Jesus' humanity. Amen. And it still didn't work. Didn't work out for the devil at all. He was defeated. And he said, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. This month coming up, we need to be in prayer and we need to be fasting. You don't believe me? Listen, I don't want no harm to come to you, your family, your seed, your bloodline, your relatives, from the youngest to the oldest. In the name of Jesus, I want total protection. And if there's any demons going on, any ancestral sins, ancestral curses that are there because they're legally allowed to be there. Listen, we're not going to have a trial. We're going to go to the judge, Jesus, amen, the judge, and we're the jury, and we're going to say no more, and they're gonna, we're going to call out the guilty demons and the ancestral sins and the ancestral curses, and we're going to count on God to deliver our family members. The month that the demonic activity and the witches and the warlocks and the Wiccans and the spiritists and the Santaria people and all those other people and the Satan worshipers, the month that they're going to rise up, listen, we Christians, we're going to rise up even higher than that. And while they're trying to keep people under the curse and under in darkness and in the occult and deception going on, we're going to speak truth, life, wholeness, holiness, amen, and deliverance. How about that? Get ready. Spiritual warfare is here. We're getting ready. This I hear things already outside of this area where I'm um, doing my thing and that's not gonna it's not gonna affect me it's not going to distract me listen they can bark they could howl they could do whatever they want in the name of Jesus me and my household we're protected amen and we're guarded and guided the angel of the Lord encamps around those who love him and boy do we love Jesus and if you look that up that angel of the Lord um, a lot of theologians say and a lot of scholars say that the angel of the Lord that is the Lord Jesus amen could be right so he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Verse 30. Then they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it. For he taught his disciples and said to them, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of the men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise on the third day. So Jesus, transfiguration. There's a lot going on. In Mark chapter 9, Transfiguration spoke to Elijah and Moses. Um, their three disciples were there. Amen. They saw they wanted to make three things for them to, to hang out there. And they didn't want to lose that um, memory. Jesus said, listen, don't tell nobody until I rise up from the dead. And they come off that mountain and they deal with this possessed son. And the disciples said, we can't do this. We can't do this. And Jesus explains why they couldn't do it. They weren't ready. They weren't filled with prayer and fasting. They were in that prayer and fasting mode. Amen. They they could have. Amen. If they would have pushed the issue of who they were. And they could identify themselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's sometimes all we have to do is remind ourselves of, of whose we are. 
Who we are is one thing, but whose we are is another. Amen. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my dad, my father, amen, my savior, my Lord, my protector, my redeemer, and he lives. He's not a dead God. Listen, October is coming. They're going to be playing, praying to the God Sam Wayne, the God of the dead. Are you kidding me? They're going to be um, speaking to their ancestors, speaking to dead relatives and all that stuff. Not really, because they're actually going to be speaking to spirits, um, disguising themselves as, you know, their, their parents, their grandparents, um, you know, people that died. But listen. There was a witch in the Old Testament, amen, the witch of Endor. It sounds like a, like a modern day um, story, right? The witch of Endor that rose the prophet, a man of God from the dead. So you don't think there's power and demons and witchcraft and all that stuff? There is power. God said it was real. He just didn't endorse it. As a matter of fact, he discouraged anybody to be part of that. He said, don't be a part of those things. Witchcraft divination spiritism you know all that he said don't be a part of that don't go to psychics don't go to soothsayers amen don't get, get into the whole horoscope thing because what you're doing is is you're inviting these demons into your home oh nobody will know brother sam watching a little pornography i'll ask for deliverance tomorrow now you're inviting spirits that's going to tempt you sexually Oh, you know, a little bit of weed, you know, won't hurt nobody. As a matter of fact, you know, Sam, um, God made the earth and all the seeds in it. So I'll smoke. And then if it's not pleasing to him, I'm sure he'll forgive me. Yeah. But then now you're inviting your mind um, to be clogged up and distracted by being high and not high on Holy Ghost. So you're being high on substance that wasn't intended for you to enter, wasn't intended to enter your body to give you any kind of wholeness or healing. It was those things are intended to give poison into your system. So however we come at it, amen, you got to be careful. You might be inviting demons into your life. You might be saying, oh, come on in because, you know, nobody's going to know. And if I'll get found out about, you know, I'll just go to Jesus. He'll forgive me because he's a forgiving God. That's a game that um, I'm not going to play. And I suggest you don't play that game either. Amen. I really hope that you are prepared for the spiritual warfare. Because it's no joke. It's real. Um, Jesus dealt with some demons. The disciples dealt with demons. Uh, in the Old Testament, you see a lot of demonic activity going on. Worshipping idols, sorcery, witchcraft. All through the scriptures, you see some things in the spirit going on. Talking animals. Amen. A deceiving serpent in the Garden of Eden that spoke. Uh, how, how, like angels, fallen angels. Warfare in the spiritual realm. Um, Ephesians chapter 6. Read it for yourself. We could get into that um, next time. And if you think that this October month is going to just go by and you're going to get a get out of spiritual warfare card, um, you're sadly mistaken. If you're an unbeliever, a skeptic, a cynic, uh, agnostic, a deist, that you think that God did everything that he bounced and now he's no longer involved with our daily activities. Or if you think that the word of God is uh, book of myths and like it's like the Greek gods and all that stuff. If you think that way, uh, I'll still continue to pray for you because that could be a deception that could get you demon possessed, demonized, and oppressed, oppressed, and even possessed. And who want? I don't want that for my worst enemy. As a matter of fact, in my travels, um, when I was a little bit more crazy, um, because I didn't have two children right now i was married but my wife knew i was already that kind of evangelist that would go in the streets and you know attempt to um, speak to anyone who was willing to speak about jesus she'll tell you and i bumped into a third generation wiccan and the lord compelled me to ask this question why are you on the losing team i asked her she said what do you mean i'm she i said how'd you get into this she was like I got into it because it was an ancestral thing. My great, great, great grandfather, my great grandfather, my grandfather, and now me. Three generations of Wiccan and witchcraft. I said, you believe in God? She says, yeah, I believe in a higher power. And she said, but there's light and there's darkness and there's power in both. Is she lying? I don't think so. The scripture shows you that there's evil spirits. As a matter of fact, God himself, a lot of people don't like to hear this. They think, um, um. I'm not right when I say this. I just don't know where the address is now, but I can find out for you if you need to know. 
God even used evil spirits to take care of his business. <clears throat> you don't like to hear that, right? I read books like this, though. This one is by Charles Stanley. It's called Personal Battle Planner. Amen. This is a workbook, study book, and it gets you ready for spiritual warfare. Uh, I wrote something called The Enemy Strategy. Amen. I want to speak to Pastor uh, Michael Jakes. He wrote a book about evangelism, but he has a portion, a chapter that's talking about spiritual warfare, and I want to have him on the show um, in the month of October. And then don't forget, if you know someone or some people, amen, I should say, that will be uh, a good candidate to join me for a live spiritual warfare podcast, amen, because um, I know that's what really matters. I want to. I want you to connect me with them, amen, uh, because I believe now's the time uh, to get other believers that know about this. Because unfortunately, some believers, they believe in the Lord. It's all good. Amen. I can't question nobody's salvation, but they seem not to understand the other part of the warfare, you know, of what's going on in the demonic realm. Because they say, oh, yeah, we're delivered. We don't have to worry about that. Some people say that. But yet, um, they have family members that might be um, ADHD. They might be um, schizophrenia. They might be... Uh, uh, Addicted to drugs, pornography, uh, violence comes out of um, their children for no reason. We have to look at that. Okay, um, let's go to the Lord first and then we go to the therapist and all that stuff and make sure that we're not dealing with uh, ancestral or generational curses and stuff like that because they do exist and they're real, but they can be broken by the power of the Word of God, amen, and by using other people um, that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, using their wisdom and understanding and get the scriptures correct and get that um, empowerment that we get from the Holy Spirit God. And there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, spiritual warfare. It's just that we are, are kind of like part of it because we're in the situation. So remember, um, let me get this up. Where's the flyer? Amen. Let me make sure I get this up in front of you right now. And no. Here it goes. Uh, October 31st, that's what I'm shooting for, uh, for a live podcast. If you know anybody that um, is being used in the kingdom of God for deliverance, healing, divine deliverance, healing, uh, that, that knows how to deal with ancestral sin and ancestral uh, generational curses and stuff like that, um, get them in contact with me or connect me with them in their ministry. Amen. Um, it's coming soon. Amen. Lord willing. And listen. I didn't raise my hand and ask the Lord to, you know, go that direction. Trust me. It's just he was been speaking with me about it. Amen. And it's coming. And this year, if you haven't noticed, has been a strange year, to say the least. And if you don't think that there's other things behind what's happening now, after we came out the gate, Christians all over the world were talking about 2020, the year of clear vision. Amen coming out of the gate with that word and then three months in the year we get sh shut down like things changed after the third month of 2020 and no i don't believe this is going to be our new norm with the mask and all that stuff but i do see demonic activity happening throughout the earth my region where i'm at uh i could see more because i'm in that region but we're not going to be defeated by a COVID-19 a virus. Scripture doesn't say we're going to be out of here with a virus. Scripture has a lot more to say. You read in Revelation about what's going to take us out. And what, why there's going to be a lot of fall away and people um, not believing anymore. Amen. Um, but that's another different Bible study. So I'm out of here. Listen, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this does not frighten you because God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but he gave us courage and a sound mind. Amen. I'm just telling you, read Ephesians chapter 6. Remind yourself what Jesus went through and how he dealt with demons and spirits that are not from him, that are evil spirits. Amen. And Or not for him, I should say. Uh, in other words, get some, some books into your, your head, into your mind. Uh, Pastor Jakes, I'm going to share that um, next time. I'm going to share you his book. He has a whole chapter on spiritual warfare. Amen. And there's a lot, a lot more. I'm going to bring out some more books that I read. 
and that I have used in the past dealing with the spiritual warfare. And um, I'm in a giving mood, so for the month of October, I want to start giving stuff away for all my viewers and all my brothers and sisters in the Lord. So I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. He's faithful. He's able. Amen. And he's here. Jehovah Shammah, the God who is here and the God who is there in your situation already. Just call upon him. He's good and he's faithful. God bless you and God keep you. Spiritual warfare. Let's go. Blazing. Bible studies.